Uh, you should look at the book Sanji is reading. What's he reading? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I. <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's a good book. It's a good book. Chapter one thousand eighty one. Tenth ship. Okay, there we go. Uh, tenth ship captain of the Blackbeard Pirates, Kuzan. So we're we're going to keep going with the, with the Garp story. Okay, not like I'm going to complain. I like myself a bit of Garp shenanigans. Okay, so Garp has turned off fall damage as well. Uh, it seems like. Uh, damn you, Garp! I'll kill that old geezer. I don't think you will. I don't think you will. Don't move, pirates, or you'll suffer even more. After. After all these years, I'm losing my edge? My guy, you nuked the entire- <laughs> Okay, you can't possibly do more damage than this. Yes, yes, very true. Th that's exactly what I'm thinking, but apparently no. Apparently he can. I'm so glad they didn't kill Kobe. Of course they didn't. Of course they didn't, this is One Piece. You went too far, Garp? Naughty boy. I can't believe he called Kobe the future of the Navy. That sucks, I'm gonna sabotage him. Unfortunately, you are not the protagonist here. Your your hat is like straight out of Jojo, uh, and you look like a character straight out of Jojo. But unfortunately, you're not the main character here, so calm down. <gasps> what? Ibari. Oh my god. Oh my god, so that's why the title was chaptered after him. Oh my god, it's actually him. What have you done? Unfree Sibari right now. That's how Kiji, Captain Kuzan. You can't go escaping when Teach isn't around. See why I didn't try to make predictions? What, what's go- Okay, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Like, no, no shot. No shot, they're actually gonna- Okay, let's- Okay, we have a flashback, okay. Two years ago, Admirals Akaino and Aokiji fought over the right to be the next Naval Fleet Admiral. About a year after that. On an island in, a new wor uh, in the New World. Okay, so what's going on here? Did Aokiji just, just like, can I, can I use the, um, the lingo that proper power scalers use? Did he just low diff the Blackbeard crew? <laughs> or no diff the Blackbeard crew? I mean, okay. Okay, all my p people are frozen outside. Undo your powers. Better watch out with that tremor tremor fruit here. Your crew will crumble to pieces. Oh my god, that's right. They have a very deadly combo and I didn't even realize it. Oh my god, you know what I just also realized? You know what we missed out on? We missed out on a very, pro like a symbolic, a dance of ice and fire. Imagine if we had an ice admiral and a fire boy fighting side by side. That would be badass. That'd be very badass. You really think I struck first? Plus, you've heard the situation. I'm in a state of mourning. It's not the right time to test me. Can you imagine who was... In the wrong here. Uh, I like the way you drink ice can- Did they just become friends? Did I miss a page? <laughs> I didn't miss a page. What? So what Akainu say after- th Oh my god, they're actually telling stories now. Two men who came up the ranks together in a fight to the death. I can feel something boiling up within me. What is this chapter? What is this chapter? Okay. So look at me now. I've got only one- I didn't know that. I didn't know that he only had one leg, but that's cool. That is badass. So that's what it's like when admirals fight. What about Akainu? Did you at least rip an arm off? Nah, but he should be scarred all over. Oh, he, oh, he is. Speaking of scars, Commodore, do you think he knows about a burn scar? Is this the man mar marked by flames again? Um, there are four red poneglyphs out there in the world that are more important than any others. Two of the four belong to Kaido and Big Mom, but the other two, they're the ones we can't find, and one of them is said to be held by a man with a burn mark. This dynamic, this dynamic we see here, is alarming to me. I'm gonna be honest with you. If I, if I like, ten minutes ago said that I think he, he's undercover, the fact that we have these whimsical scenes, he's, it's held by a man with a burn mark. Aokiji's like, who me? Just, just showing his scar, like, Okay. Uh, they say he rides in an all-black ship? 
that swallows enemies in a gigantic vortex if they should wander too close. Boys? 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 Perhaps that's a devil fruit at play. My guess is that it's a government man. The world government's got a dark secret, a secret of its own, and if they hold uh, one of the stones, it means no pirate will ever reach the One Piece. That makes perfect sense. But a man who rides an all-black ship and... and swallows things to the bottom of the sea? That is Davy Jones, a man marked by flames. The fact that they're addressing him like this... You know what? I don't think it's Saul D. Goodman. I honestly don't think it's Saul D. Goodman anymore. That doesn't make sense anymore. Maybe it does. Because we never saw Saul D. Goodman actually... I mean, we never saw a ship. But an all-black ship that su swallows enemies in a gigantic vortex. That is so... So Davy Jones. What catches me off guard here is that Shiryu says that it's a government man. And again, this is one of those times where I want to zoom out of the story and think about Oda actually writing this thing. Why would he say that if, um... Oh my god, I'm getting another phone call. Uh, why would he write this in if it wasn't relevant, right? So if, if he's right, if he's basically throwing this guess out there that, oh, what if it's a government man? That sort of makes me think, well, what if it is a government man? And you're basically telling this uh, to us right now. And this whole theory makes perfect sense. Unless Davy Jones had the original Big Straw hat. And that's in Marie Joie. Maybe. Maybe. You know what this reminds me of? This is gonna be a very, very weird reference, but in, like, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Sails, uh, you have these legendary ships, which are just, like, somewhere off in the map, and they're, like, extremely difficult, and this is sort of that, right? It's just this, this wandering ship where if you wander too close, you just get sucked into a whirlpool. It's like this object that you can never sort of, uh, come near. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, Poneglyphs got no good memories of, uh, about them. If I'd seen one of those red stones at Ohura, I wouldn't forget it. But all I remember was a good friend fighting back against the government. Okay, so he does mention Saul D. Goodman. And the sad, lonely eyes of a little girl whose fate rested in the palm of my hand. This is really confusing to me. This is really confusing to me because he does mention Saul D. Goodman and he clearly mentions Robin. Uh, what do you think, Commodore? If we take his power, it would be a huge boost. <laughs> Okay, do I need to send you to a frozen hellscape? Okay. Would you ride with us instead? Have you lost your mind, Captain? You're out of a job, ain't, uh, ain't ya? Anything lined up? What else are you gonna do? Chased around by the powers of justice. But in our world, justice takes a different form. Have you got the wrong idea about pirates? Nobody said we were all best friends. Oh my god, I love this so much. I love how this directly mirrors Luffy so much. This is such a perfect scene of, like, Blackbeard and the most unlikely of allies in Kuzan. And Blackbeard is, like, the, the complete opposite of Luffy. He's like, we're not friends here. Come on, let's team up, right? It's just beneficial for us. Whereas Luffy, in the same situation, would be like, what do you mean? Like, sh yeah, we weren't friends ten minutes ago, but let's be friends, you know? Join me. Oh my god, I love that so much. The only thing pirates need is, is an alignment of interests. This is good. This is good. Uh, what do you want, Kuzan? Well, we know what he wants. He joined up with them. Blackbeard Pirates, 10th Ship Commander, Kuzan. You always did like to say whatever was on your mind. But I'm afraid I can't help you with any of those things, Garp. I love that about you. Which is why I live my life the way I want now. Would you kill your senior apprentice to save your protege? Is this another thing I've forgotten? I didn't know he was a protege of Garp's. That seems like an important detail. I mean, it's not really that big of a detail, but that that's that gives another very personal angle. Which also makes me wonder, what's going to happen when Garp meets Luffy? <laughs> okay, okay. Let's keep going. It's not working on him. Listen up, uh, Kuzan. Wavering is a sign of weakness. Blue hole. Well then. Um, well then.
I, I don't I like I don't know what to say about this by the way I've literally no clue like wh what is this supposed to mean is he down he's an admiral probably not but this is Garp Garp's an absolute legend Garp literally just nuked the entire town so is him punching Kuzan literally in the face going to like knock him out I don't know is this Kuzan going undercover and just making it uh, making it very believable right like he literally attacks him and then takes a blow to the face to be like I was defeated this was Garp this was legendary hero Garp what could I even do right is this him just building an alibi I have no idea that's what I think it is though if you want to uh, sort of hear my theory about it I think this is him deliberately allowing himself to be annihilated because he just knows that it will hurt but I can take it and I still want to remain undercover. I mean, he's clearly not dead. Garp didn't just one shot uh, Kuzan, who literally just came back into the story. All right, let's keep going. Winner Island, you. What? The polar tank submarine of the Heart Pirates has been sunk. You can't call yourself a pirate crew. You've got no means of escape. Those hundred pirates' hearts you stole at rocky ports are all living in fear on Pirate Island. But if I bring your heart back with me, I'm sure they'd be in a celebrating mood. Well, I mean, that's another thing ticked off the bingo. I mean, memes aside, Everybody expected this. Law literally could not win this fight. It makes no sense in the story. Of course Blackbeard wins. Question is, what happens now? I doubt he's gonna die. Okay, let's see. Let's keep going. What's Chopper doing here? Uh, I can't guarantee it works. What? What's this? Um, I just can't decide whether to sell. Oh god. He knows about it. Okay, there's a ton to unpack here. First of all, I can't decide whether to sell the op, op fruits or to use it. Can it give me eternal life? So, number one, the fruit acquisition, the fruit stealing process, manifests a fruit. He can sell it, right? So automatically, my initial theory of him literally just yoinking someone's soul and like sucking it inside of him or something, or rather like controlling it or something, is false, right? So clearly he gets it into a fruit, which I now think... Yeah, basically what I think it is, is that when he kills a fruit user, uh, he uses the black hole power to basically just create the space of infinite mass, and then when a uh, fruit user dies and their, like, sort of soul leaves or their power leaves, he just immediately sucks it into a random fruit, right? So the joke I made about everyone carrying around baskets of fruit, I think that is literally true with Blackbeard. I think he has fruit hidden inside of him. That sounds silly, but I think that's what it is. And okay, number two. He knows it can give him eternal life. Which seems odd that he doesn't want it. Because, like, the fact that he even considers selling it implies that he doesn't care about the eternal life aspect. Which is odd to me, because he wants to be, like, the king of the world and the king of the pirates, right? I mean, being eternal, probably a cool thing. Probably a cool thing. So, Beppo is apparently a big ball of fire? Okay, okay. Beppo stocks going crazy right now. Oh, so did Chopper make him some sort of drug that allows him to go in his moon form without a moon? Eh, eh, I kind of don't like that, to be honest. I like the moon aspect. I'm an Avatar fan. I guess that makes sense. I like myself, like, natural occurrences that empower something. I think that's just very neat. Which, again, this, this immediately makes me ask the question of... What can Chopper do then? Like, what else does he have up his sleeve that we still haven't seen? I mean, Beppo is ridiculous, though. I mean, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Dude's a mad lad. This is insane. He slipped him a rumble ball, El Mayo, basically. Yeah, it's like Chopper's gonna... I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hook you up real quick, basically. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like that Beppo is just, like, turned in, turns into an absolute monster. I think that is very cool. Uh, but the fact that it sort of removes that power sense from uh, from the moon... I'm not a huge fan. But okay, let's keep going. They escaped. Okay, so he does live. Uh, the pirate Trafalgar Law and his heart pirates defeated. Not going back, trust them, Captain. We came out of that frozen port in the north and we made it this far. None of us are gonna die. I mean, basically, yeah, this is, this is what we expected. So basically, he's no longer a contender for the One Piece, clearly. 
And does that mean he's going to, to team up with the Straw Hats once again? Is my question. Because technically, if they went from Wano and they all went on different routes, they're relatively close by. So is this going to be Beppo just showing up at um, at uh, Egghead? Maybe. Maybe Kid is going to wash up on Egghead. I mean, imagine this. Imagine this. Both Kid and Law get defeated, right? Somehow, both of them end up on Egghead, and we literally have Sabaody 2.0 with the original trio back at it again. And this time, they're like 100% behind Luffy because both of them have li literally just lost their crews. I think that'd be neat. I don't think that's going to happen, but I think that'd be neat. I think this is just a case of showcasing um, the difference in Law and Kid. Like, if you ask my my initial reaction. I think with Law, this is like a case of sort of him being caught off guard, but still having some sort of plan, and like, he, he tries escaping, right? So it's not a case of him like, oh yeah, I'll take you on. It is literally a case of survival. Whereas with Kid, he, he sought out a battle of his own and died. <laughs> So, I think this is just that. What is this chapter? What- 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 what is this chapter? And th that's the end of the chapter. That's the end of the chapter. I enjoyed this one so much. This is such a good chapter. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so let's break this down. Two big takeaways. One, potentially, Aokiji did really get lured onto the Blackbeard crew because of how they live, right? Which is again, a sort of a direct mirror of Luffy, where he can occasionally find very loyal allies, but it's not a case of them actually being friends or anything. It's just a case of, like, they do whatever the hell they want, and it's just, like, mutual benefits, basically. That's number one. I don't think that is very likely. Number two, Aokiji is doing this entire thing undercover, which makes perfect sense with Smoker, right? The fact that he showed up and said, it's still, it's just me, or it's still me, or whatever like that, right? Implying that everyone knows about this whole deal. Because again, there's there's some information asymmetry here, right? Um, it's just us finding out that he's the 10th captain, but I'm guessing a lot of other people know about it. But yeah, I think, I think it's just him taking a blow to the face to prove, to basically prove his loyalties to Blackbeard, right? I think is, is what it is. As for Law... I mean, the only reasonable... It's going to be either Shanks or, or, or Luffy, I think. Because if Shanks is once again, like, trying to make sure Blackbeard doesn't cause havoc, he might be also somewhere in the vicinity. Like, after he annihilated a kid, that is. Law's a weird one. Law's a really weird one. I don't know what happens to him. Maybe he really does just escape and that's it for him for now. I don't buy it, though. And the man marked by flames. At this point, I'ma be honest. This might be a case of me overthinking it, like it, it most likely actually is. I don't think it's Saul D. Goodman. I think Saul D. Goodman is the obvious pick. It's sort of like a... Oh, and the Vortex thing? The Vortex thing? If that is Davy Jones, if that is actually Davy Jones, I will actually lose my mind. That will be the first ever time when I am very, very, very happy about getting something right in the story. That is the first time where I'll stand on my soapbox and scream into the world, I was right, because that will be incredible. Um, I think the, the highlight of this chapter for me, like, believe it or not, as much as I don't like the, um, like, taking away the moon aspects, the highlight for me is probably Beppo. I like that he literally just becomes a monstrous bear. That is so badass. I love it. I love it. That's really cool. The Kuzan stuff is sort of one I think I'll be thinking about for the next couple of weeks. Like, what, what, what's he's really about? Definitely not a Blackbeard Pirate. There's no way Aokiji is not from Sword or something. Um, I don't think he is from Sword, and I don't think he's a Blackbeard Pirate as well. Uh, I think he is literally in the middle by design, right? He is so... like, his mission of going undercover and sort of keeping an eye on Blackbeard, I feel like he thinks it's so important that he doesn't reveal himself to literally anyone, uh, is what I think it is. So him taking a punch from Garp is basically that. Like, you'll knock me out. Yes, it'll hurt a lot. Uh, but my cover won't be blown either to you or to Blackbeard, is I think what it is. It might be two 5D chess, but honestly, that's what I think it is. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a case of me being like, oh no, Aokiji is such a nice guy, but that's what I honestly think it is. I don't buy Aokiji just joining Blackbeard. Um, predictions for next chapter. 
I mean, I think we've we've had so many back-to-back chapters of things going on everywhere else in the world. It must be Egghead, right? No shot. No shot that it's going to be a case. Okay, I'm starting to read, like, way too... I was... Like, imagine this. If this is Sabody. In Sabody, it was only the Straw Hat Pirates that were annihilated. Uh, Kid and Law both got away, right? Now, both Kid and Law have been defeated. So is it just going to be Luffy who escapes? Or it's a case of literally all of them being wiped out, one after another. It could be literally hundreds of dif uh, different things. Um, I do think next chapter is going to be Egghead, though. Uh, what's going to happen on Egghead? No idea. But wait, so this this means that this means that it's not Kuzan arriving at Egghead either, right? Assuming all of this is happening at the same time. I mean, I doubt Kuzan would be getting his ass handed to him by Garp and then showing up at Egghead. So no, this is definitely not Kuzan. So who's showing up at Egghead then? From what I remember from the video we literally just watched, I don't remember. I actually don't remember. It's either Lafitte or the lady, whose name I forget, or potentially both. Could be Lafitte, because we've seen Lafitte be sort of a, um, like the very, very first time we saw him even, um, he showed up at like the government's table, right? So if he's sort of like their pseudo scout or something, because he can, but no, 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 that doesn't make sense, because if he can fly, why would they take a ship? Oh my God. You know what, I just put another idea. What if it's the lady who disguises herself as one of the straw hats and we have even more chaos? Is Egghead about to turn up to 11? Because we literally have someone who can shape shift? Now that sounds very fun. Whoops. That sounds very, very fun. And I hope that happens. Uh, Katarina Devon. Yes, that is who I mean. Also, it is getting very, very hot in the room. Okay, you know what? I actually hope it's her. I actually hope it's her. Like, I really hope it's her. Because, man, that, that would add some spicy drama. On both sides, even. Alright. Chapter rating. Once again, a totally unbiased, uh, and definitely not influenced by Blackbeard, and potentially Davy Jones, I will give this chapter a near-perfect 9.95 once again. Incredible. Blackbeard's a badass. Uh, if... If this is Davy Jones, then that's it. One Piece has been solved by yours truly. That's the review. Ship it. Ship it. This was a very, very good chapter. And the fact that there's Golden Week next week hurts my little heart. Uh, other than that, if you need a PC, buy a Starforge PC using my link. Uh, have a wonderful start of your week, and then I'll see you whenever I see you. Bye-bye.